Hola mi amigos, me llamo Elon Osborne and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. And if you like that stuff too, and like the way I talk about that stuff, like this video, yeah. subscribe, yeah. become a patron, rock some merch, get some tunes, read my children's book to your kids. Link in description, link, link in description, boy! So you got yourself a Denon audio video receiver with pre-outs. So what? Big deal, I say. No, just kidding. More like, congratulations! Word's been going around the neighborhood about your movie nights. Wow, enough of that. Yeah, no kidding. Nobody asked you. This is true. Well, now that you got yourself a Denon receiver, you might be thinking, now what? Well, before I send back this Denon X4700H, I thought I'd go over a few setups for you, just to make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to getting Dolby Atmos out of your system. And if I'm not mistaken, Marantz has the exact same software, so feel free to follow along with your Marantz as well. Since the X4700H is a nine channel AVR that can process a total of 11 channels with the help of an external amp, the extent to which I'll be going today is a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, now that we're in the setup menu, we want to go down to speakers, manual setup, and yeah, hi, I'm over here on the side. <laughs> go to amp assign, assign mode. You might not think it's right, but we actually want it to be the 9.1 assign mode. That's going to get us the height channels that we want. Boom, there we go, 9.1 channel. Floor, since we're just dealing with five floor level or bed layer speakers, we want to make sure this is just five channel because uh, five channel and SB just means surround back. We don't have surround back in this case. So boom, height channels. In case you have Dolby Atmos upward firing speakers, you would change that to none. And as, now you can see it says Dolby speakers. That is talking about the upward firing speakers that bounce sound off of your ceiling because you can see it in the graphic. It changes, four channel. Oh, now there's little Atmos speakers on top of the bed layer speakers. Or maybe you just have a two channel. And if you have two channel Dolby Atmos speakers, you can also specify front Dolby or surround Dolby depending on where you actually put them. So this graphic does actually help you quite a bit just to kind of aid you along your way to making sure your setup is correct in the software matching to what you actually have your speakers set up to in your living room as well or your home theater space, etc. So since I actually have in ceiling speakers, I don't want Dolby speakers. So I'm gonna say none. Height speakers, yes. Height speakers does refer to mounted height speakers and or in ceiling speakers. Okay, so since I have in ceiling speakers and I want a 5.1.2 setup, I'm gonna choose two channel for my height. For the layout, you can see there's front height, where you actually have mounted above the TV your Atmos speakers. Top front, if you have in-ceiling speakers between your listening position and the TV. Top middle, if your in-ceiling speakers are directly above your listening position. Top rear, if your in-ceiling speakers are slightly behind your listening position. My cat is meowing. Rear height, you've got rear height if you actually have mounted Atmos speakers on your ceiling. So plenty of different options here for you. So like I said, in my case, I have top front because I have in ceiling speakers. So now that we got that taken care of, let's go back. Speaker config. See, we got two front, a center, two subwoofers, surround, and our top fronts. So in this case, since I said 5.1.2, we can change that to one subwoofer. And as you can see, that automatically changed the front speakers. Since I chose none for subwoofer, it's like, oh, well then you must have large speakers at the front. Not the case. So I want to make sure and change that back too small. You know why? You definitely want to choose small, no matter the size of the speakers. Even if you have large towers up front, you still want to choose small because that gives you the option of a crossover frequency. If you choose large or with some receivers, it'll call those full range speakers, that disables the crossover option. We don't want that. We wanna have as much flexibility as possible. So choose small for all of your speakers so that you can have a crossover frequency for all of them. 
Cool, so that's all we got here. So now this layout looks exactly like we have in our home theater space. So let's back out of there. Let's go down to crossovers. As you can see, I've got crossover options for all the speakers. Rule of thumb is to put a crossover frequency of about 20 to 30 hertz above the lowest frequency in the frequency response of your speakers. So take a look at that, look them up, see what your frequency response is for your speakers. What's the lowest frequency? These particular ones of mine are 60 hertz. So I wanna set the crossover frequency to 20 hertz above that. So I have it set to the THX standard 80 hertz. Center is the same deal. It's about 60 hertz is the lowest in its frequency response, so I set it to 80. My surrounds actually go down to 45. So 60 hertz isn't technically 20 hertz above, but I don't have the option of choosing 65 hertz as a crossover frequency, so I just went ahead and chose 60, and that seemed to do the trick. It still sounded great. Top front, my top fronts also go down to about 60 hertz, so I chose the THX standard 80 hertz for the crossover. Makes sense? I hope so. Moving on. Okay, now that we've done amp assign, speaker config, and crossovers, back out of that, now is the time to do Odyssey setup. Now, it might seem a little counterintuitive because Odyssey will then automatically change a few things around, including maybe some crossover frequencies, but you have to do the manual setup first so that the Denon software knows which layout you have, so it knows which speakers to run test tones through. So then, once you've run Odyssey, go back into manual setup, check your amp assign, check your speaker config, check your crossovers, and just make any other fine adjustments that you might need to make once again. Like I said, I know it's counterintuitive, but it's just the way it goes. That's just the order of operations that you need to follow. So now that we got 5.1.2 out of the way, let's go to 5.1.4. Go to amp assign as huge. Still, we need five channels on the bed layer, two channels as height channels, but now we want four height channels. So four channels, awesome. And as you can see in this graphic, I will just run through all the uh, options that you have and there's a lot of them. So top front, top rear, that's exactly what I have. I've got two height channels in the ceiling between my listening position and the TV and I've got two in ceiling speakers behind my listening position angled down. But as you can see, you also have a combination of top front and rear height channels the rear height channels being Atmos enabled speakers that have been mounted on the ceiling. Or they could just be any speakers that you happen to have up there mounted. Top middle rear height means the in-ceiling speakers are directly above your listening position. And then you have mounted speakers behind the listening position. Front height, top middle, you've got two Atmos speakers above the TV mounted on the wall and two in-ceiling speakers located directly above your listening position. Front height and top rear, that means the top rear are now in ceiling speakers behind your listening position with your two front Atmos speakers mounted above the TV. Front height and rear height, you've got the two Atmos speakers above the TV and two mounted Atmos speakers behind your listening position. Holy cow, you got this one too, front height above the TV and side height or surround height mounted to the sides of the listening position. Awesome, they pretty much have you covered here. And back to square one, which is what I want. That is 5.1.4. And if you go back into speaker config, you got front, center, one subwoofer, surrounds, top front, and now top rear. Moving on, let's do 7.1.2, amp assign. That's where we wanna go. Now that we got seven bed layer speakers, for the floor we want five channel and surround back. Ooh, look at there. Height speakers, we've only got two in this scenario. So we will choose two. Top front, you know what, just for kicks, let's say top middle, whatever. Maybe you have top middle, good for you. All right, so now that we got that layout done. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that you still want 9.1 assign mode. Let's go to speaker config. Front small, center small, one subwoofer, surround small, surround back. Oh, we do have surround back now. And depending on your setup, if you have more of an old school setup, you might have just one speaker behind instead of two surround back channels. That's more of like your old school DTS Neo 6, I believe it was called, that had the one surround back channel. It's like a 6.1. You might have that, who knows? 
but in our case, we've got two surround back channels. And obviously we wanna have it show small. Top middle, it defaults to none for some reason. So we want it to be small. Hooray! So now we got our seven bed layer speakers and our two in ceiling speakers. That's our 7.1.2 layout that we need. Awesome. And then go ahead and check your crossovers depending on the frequency response of your speakers, just as usual. Then run Odyssey, then make any fine adjustments. Hooray. Moving on, 7.1.4. Oh boy. This time, our assign mode, we want it to be 11.1. <gasps> there it is. So since we have seven bed layer speakers, we still want five channel and surround back. Now we have four channels above. Holy cow. But since seven plus four equals 11, and technically the Denon X4700H is a nine channel receiver, we need to add an external amp to power two of these channels so that we can have a total of 11 channels being processed. As soon as I chose four height channels, you can now see that we have this option for pre-out because it's gonna need help to process all those channels. You can have it set up to have an external amplifier powering your front two left and right speakers or your top rear height channels. It'll actually say height two on the back of the Denon. And because we're dealing with an external amplifier, let's go down to view terminal config, and then you can see that over on the far right, as it says height two left and height two right, uh-oh, those are grayed out. But you can see above it, height two rear are now highlighted. So that's what we want. Or if we go back, if indeed we do have some beefy tower speakers up front and we have a powerful external amplifier that we want to power them with, if we do choose front to be powered by an external amplifier, once again, we go down to view terminal configuration. Oh, now we see over on the left, that front left and front right are grayed out, but above it in the pre-out section, they are highlighted. Okay, so that's how we get that done. Speaker config now for the 7.1.4. Front speakers, center speakers, one subwoofer, surround speakers, two surround back channels, top front and top rear. Seven bed layer channels, four height channels, one subwoofer. We've got the configuration we need. Now, let's say you have a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos system, but you got, for example, an Emotiva Basics A3 that you want to power your front soundstage with. So your front left, center, and front right. Well, basically you just do the 5.1.4 setup, but you do it from the 11.1 channel assign mode like it shows here. It's not the first thing you'd probably think of, but that's just the reality. But here's the tricky part. We've got an 11.1 channel assign mode, but here we actually do want five channel and surround back, even though we only have five channels in our bed layer. This is the only way for the software to engage the front speakers or your rear height speakers to be powered externally. So in this case, because we do want the front speakers to be powered externally, this is perfect. We can see down here, pre-out is for front. And you can see on the graphic, at the bottom of those front tower speakers, they say pre-pre. So beyond that, now that we have this part set up, now we need to go back to the speaker config because we're still dealing with just 5.1.4. Now, since we don't actually have seven bed layer speakers, surround back, we want to change to none. And look, now the graphic shows five bed layer speakers, four height channels, and one subwoofer. Perfect, that's what we want. And then the only other thing to account for is your actual physical connection of the center channel. Remember when we had to assign either the front channels or the rear height channels to be powered externally? Those are the only ones we have to worry about in the software to actually assign them a pre-out. 
All the other pre-outs on the back of the Denon are technically always on and ready for a signal. So the only other thing we need to account for to hook up our Emotiva Basics A3 is to plug in an RCA patch cable to the center pre-out on the back of the Denon, plug it into the center RCA input of the Basics A3. So now the audio signal coming out of the center channel bypasses the internal amp in the Denon and goes straight to the Emotiva Basics A3. That's doing it for a three channel amp. It is the exact same setup. If you were to do it for a 5.1.4 system and you had, for example, a Basics A5 and you wanted to externally power five of your bed layer speakers, this is exactly the software setup that you would need. Nothing changes. The only thing that changes is the physical connections. You would then plug in more RCA patch cables into the back of the Denon, into the surround channels. Then you would plug those into the Basics A5, for example. And lastly, if you have a Basics A7 and you have seven bed layer speakers, this screen right here shows exactly what you want. But the only difference between the two previous examples I gave was that we gotta go back into speaker config and say that we now have two surround back channels. That's the only other difference. If you happen to have a 7.1.4 system and you want to power all seven of your bed layer speakers with an external amp, that's the only other change you need to make in the software. Everything else is just the physical connections on the back of the Denon itself. So does that make sense? Software versus hardware? I sure hope that I explain that in a way that you can understand and it wasn't too confusing. I know that it was confusing at first when I first tried to set this up. And to kind of go along on this same trajectory of software versus hardware connections, I'm gonna run through one more example for you. And that is, say you've got a 7.1.4 system and you've got an Emotiva Basics A4 and you wanna power your four height channels externally. So in that case, we're still going to be in 11.1 channel assigned mode. Floor is still going to be five channel and surround back since we've got seven bed layer speakers. Your height speakers are four channel, of course, layout top front or top rear or whatever it is in your case. And since you want to power the height speakers with your external amp, that's when we change this to top rear. Okay, that is the only thing we need to worry about in the software on the amp assign page. So now let's go back to speaker config. Since we're dealing with 7.1.4, we've got currently five bed layer speakers, but we want seven. So we choose small surround back two speakers. Now this graphic shows the layout that we want. So that's the only thing we need to worry about on the software side. Now on the hardware side, we need to just physically connect the height one pre-outs to the Basics A4 and connect RCA patch cables from the height two to the Basics A4. So we don't actually have to assign a pre-out for the height one channels because those are just always on and ready for a signal. I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record now, but I just wanted to be as thorough as possible. And I sure hope that you followed along and know exactly what you're gonna need for your home theater and how to set it up because I want you to enjoy your home theater. Congratulations. Now let's watch some cool movies, shall we? And there you have it. Yikes. I know that was a lot to digest, but if I covered your system that you're wanting to set up, <laughs> Yay. But if I didn't, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer your questions. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on another video like this one. And of course, always be listening.